resources of a company such as cash, receivables, inventory, labor, information, and many more are susceptible to risks such as but not limited to asset loss and unreliable information. These risks are due to numerous undesirable events like fraud perpetrated by persons both inside and outside the company, errors due to employee incompetence, faulty computer programs, corrupted input data, and mischievous acts such as an authorized access by computer hackers and threats from computer viruses that destroy programs and databases. Therefore, these resources need to be protected by designing and implementing internal controls. The internal control system comprises policies, practices, and procedures employed by the company to achieve four broad objectives. First, to safeguard assets of the company. Second, to ensure the accuracy and reliability of accounting records and information. Third, to promote efficiency in the firm's operations. Fourth, to measure compliance with management's prescribed policies and procedures. Designers and auditors of internal controls are guided by four modifying assumptions inherent in the control objectives mentioned earlier. The first modifying assumption is the establishment and maintenance of a system of internal control is a management responsibility. Second assumption is the internal control system should provide reasonable assurance that the four broad objectives of internal control are met in a cost-effective manner. This means that no system of internal control is perfect and the cost of achieving improved control should not outweigh its benefits. The third assumption is internal controls should achieve the four broad objectives regardless of the data processing method used. The control techniques used to achieve these objectives will, however, vary with different types of technology. And the fourth assumption, every system of internal control has limitations on its effectiveness. This includes the possibility of error, circumvention or collusion, management override of controls, and changing conditions making existing controls become ineffectual or not effective anymore over time. The absence or weakness of control is called an exposure or control deficiency. A weakness in internal control may expose the company to one or more of the following types of risks. First, distraction of assets, both physical assets and information. Second, theft of assets. Third, corruption of information or the information system itself. And fourth, disruption of the information system. There are three types of internal controls that a company can design and implement. Preventive controls, detective controls, 
and corrective controls. Preventive controls are the first line of defense in the control structure. These are passive techniques designed to reduce the frequency of occurrence of undesirable events. Examples of preventive controls are the use of a well-designed source document when collecting data on a transaction. This informs users to enter the necessary data on the document before it is entered into the system. Another example of a preventive control is the use of username and password when logging in to the system. Detective controls form the second line of defense. These are devices, techniques, and procedures designed to identify and expose undesirable events that escaped or eluded the preventive controls. Examples of detective controls are the review of the details on the document done by the supervisor, and audit activity logs that are automatically recorded by the application software each time a user accesses the system. Corrective controls are actions taken to reverse the effects of errors detected by the detective controls. Examples of corrective controls are stumping the document rejected or disapproved after the supervisor's review and blocking the login credentials of a user after several failed attempts in logging into the system. Now you understand internal controls. Click the video on the left screen for the next lesson.